Hey guys, sure shot Midget here doing a video on a G&G M4 here. So, one of my friends got one of these G&G M4s. Not a fan of G&G. And I will come up out with a video about their ETU MOSFET soon. And you'll see why. Um, their customer service is crap. Utter garbage. Um, but the build quality and stuff, the quality of their parts is pretty good. It's decent, especially for a beginner gun. Um, so, basically... Um, let's just go over what he uses and everything. So, uh, back here you have a crane stock. Um, now, if you don't know what a crane stock is, it has the ability to store batteries on the side of the stock, and obviously you can fit some in the buffer tube as well. Um, there's a 9.6-1600 nunchuck in here. We will also test it with an 11.1, um, 1,000 milliamp. Um, so the body's plastic. Most of these G&G bodies are plastic. Their top tech versions are more expensive and they have the metal bodies. And I think even some of their combat machines do have metal bodies, I believe. Um, but they're more expensive, obviously. And then we have a quad rail up here, which is free float. So this is going to be a pretty solid rail. There's no wobble on it at all. Um, the guy got this used, but it was pretty much like new condition. Um, it's like three months old or so. So, and it was gotten a mystery box and the person didn't use it a whole lot. So, and you can really see that it looks brand new. Um, so the rail system, no wobble. I believe it came with the rail cover. So those are pretty cool. They're in tan. So this is like the two-tone version. Uh, there's a cool suppressor or um, flash light, excuse me, flash out here that I believe um, takes the AAC quick detach flash hiders or suppressor sorry now if I'm wrong let me know I don't know if G&G &G makes a specific proprietary flash hider that slides on and is quick detach I'm not you know positive but it looks exactly like the ridges and the locking lugs on the AAC type so maybe compatible check like forms and stuff just to be sure um, also forgot to mention back here there is a uh, ambi sling mount here um, charging handle opens the uh, the fake bolt moves and then you have the standard G&G plastic cop up which is okay they're all right um, and then their buckings or their barrels are uh, uh, aluminum like this they're really not very good and sometimes they're bent a lot of times they're not uh, accurate um, out of the box I did swap out the bucking this is the G&G bucking I put a Lonex uh, what I believe is a 50 degree it has to be a 50 degree because um, it's not the 70 degree hard ones. Um, since the Lonex 50 degree is in here, um, it actually shoots really, really well with that. The G&G &G one, in my experience, they're not very good, but a lot of people like them. A lot. I've heard of a lot of people on forums say they love them. I don't. I've had three of them, and they have not shown good performance. So, um, let's see. He has a Leaper's Red Dot on here. Um, it's just your basic Red Dot, and in fact, it's starting to die, so it does need new. In fact, nope, there it is. It is starting to die, though. It's a red and green, but it's starting to die, so the green doesn't even turn on. Um, so he needs a new battery. Um, but it's a pretty cool red dot, you know, basic red dot. I'm not sure what sights come with the gun. I'm not even sure if anything does come with it, but I imagine flip-up sights came with it. So I don't know if he has those or if the previous owner kept them or not. Um, so I'll go ahead and disassemble the gun real quick um, so you can see just the basic G&G parts on the outside. So you have the basic G&G shell, um, which actually is radius, but these are pretty weak shells. Um, I have one and actually the person that owns this, his brother, actually has the Echo One CQBR custom build that I put together for him and it has a Radius G&G shell too. Um, they're both running about M110 springs. Um, this one actually may be an M100, but it's probably an M110 um, because of the wide, wide-ish bore barrel or non-tight bore. It's not a wide bore, it's just not a tight bore. It's probably a 605 or something. Um, and then the hop of them bucking, yeah. You don't need to see that. Um, let's go ahead and shoot it now. So again, everything in here is stock except for the uh, Lomix bucking. Um, we're gonna test it out with um, some 0.2 gram BBs and let's go ahead and use the g, &G mag first. g, &G mag is uh, pretty good, it's solid. It's kind of like the um, K120s that suck. Um, comes apart like that. Uh, it feeds pretty well. It's a good mag, and actually the follower comes all the way out, so it feeds every last BB, or at least it's supposed to. So we'll shoot a few rounds through it, and then we'll chrono up real quick here. This, is, again, is a half-charge 9.6, and these are point twos. Must be out of ammo. Nope. So 
So feeding seems iffy with this mag. Let's go ahead and chrono it real quick. Um, these are point twos again. 338. And this is with hop up adjusted again. 337. 332. Whoa, that was a double feed. Let's go and try the DDP mag. Actually, yeah. Because the flash mag's full of two fives. Alright. 318, 319, 315, 330. So it doesn't seem to be super consistent. 324. Uh, you guys can probably see that. I'll just keep going. It's not the most consistent, but again, it's fairly new, so maybe it needs broken in. And also, um, G and G piston heads aren't the best at uh, keeping compression consistent. Yeah, the feeding with this thing is a little iffy. Um, so, um, it shoots pretty well. Hop up wise, it shoots fantastically range wise. Um, and consistency wise with the low next bucking with the G&G it wasn't the best so out of the box really the only upgrade I'd recommend is probably a bucking swap 336 329 328 335 so it's not the best at consistency oh I remember what I was gonna say um the piston head some G&G piston heads have issues um, where the uh, O-ring does not have room to move. It's like an error. So basically people have to stick like uh, screwdrivers into the slot so that they kind of spread apart. So I'm not sure if they corrected that or what like generation or year they had that issue. So that may be the issue in here and the consistency with the feet per second maybe because of that. So let's try full auto with the 9.6. It shoots really consistently. All right, let's go ahead and switch to the 11.1 LiPo here. Um, so the 9.6 doesn't give the best trigger response, but again, this has got to be a half charge battery, 9.6, so. Um, stock motor too, stock everything else. So we have a adapter here to Tamiya for the 11.1. Alright, so we're going to shoot some .25s through this. This flash mag feeds perfectly in here, so I'm not sure why. The GMP is iffy, and the G&G mag is also iffy, so feeding may be a little iffy. I should have shot them. <laughs> So trigger response is all right. Let's test rate of fire on an 11.1. So about 16. Not the best. Not a DSG. Very consistent. Unbelievable with this bucking in here. Uh -huh. Alright, there goes the flash mag. Thank you, Lonex. You make great mags. Um, so that is it for this video. Thank you for watching, guys. Um, again, G&G guns are okay. The biggest issue with this gun, really the only issue right now, is feeding. It seems to be really iffy, and I'm not sure if it's the mags. Um, I've, I found that G&G magwells are kind of iffy with mags. Like, this is nice and, well, there's a little bit of wobble. Um, but even the mag that comes with it seems to kind of not feed the best. So I'll figure that out, though, but that is the only issue with this gun. So thank you for watching, guys. Pew, pew out.